Welcome to this introduction to MemoQ. I'm Damien from MemoQ's marketing team, and I will be the host of this webinar. Um, our presenter today is Angelika Zafas. She once earned a degree in translation for Chinese and Japanese, but she moved very early in her career to the more technical side of the translation business. Angelika has been a trainer for transition tools for the last 20 years and has worked with MemoQ since the tool came to market in 2006. Now we'll be showing the basics you need to know to get started with MemoQ as a translator. The session will last approximately 35 minutes plus an additional five to 10 minutes for questions at the end. You can type your questions at any time and if any of the questions can be answered during the session, we will provide the answers to everyone by email. The session will also be recorded and you will be able to access it at memoq.com and on our YouTube channel in a few days. Now, I would like to hand over to Angelica and let her start the webinar. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. And what I have here for you just is a very short um, Notification, for all of those of you who want to type a question, if you move your mouse pointer at the very bottom of the screen that you see, then you will see this line popping up where you can use the chat and the question and answer field where you can type in your questions. I will be answering these questions at the end of the session. And as Damien said, if there's anything that we can't answer, then we will send you an email about that. All right, let's get started. And this session is about how to get started with MemoQ. What you see now is MemoQ for translators. So we have different ways of getting started. First of all, you will see the dashboard, which is the list of projects that you're working on. And to create a project, there are different ways to do that. There is, for example, the create a project without a template and create a new project with a template. I would suggest to get started without a template because then you have the, the wizard that guides you through and you can select all the things that you want to use in your project. The template is there to have a little bit more automation. So for example, having a translation memory created automatically in the background. But I do suggest to get started with the, with the project wizard. So let's do that. First of all, the project needs a name and it needs languages. So I'm going to select my source and my target language. Other than that, you don't really need to fill out anything, but you can. Here are additional fields for project, client, domain, and subject, which means that if you fill out anything here, this is going to be saved with every sentence that you save to the translation memory in your project. So let's say my project has the number one, two, three, and the subject is education. Angelica, I think we cannot see your screen. Okay. Something is frozen somehow. Okay, let me share again. Okay, is it coming up now? Now for me it's good. Oh. Let, let me know if there's anything that is not working. Uh, let me know right away. Thank you. So in the project wizard, I'm going to add the project number one, two, three and my subject education. Then I'll go to the next step. And this is about adding the files that you want to translate. Now here's an import and an import with options. The difference is that the import um, here, MemoQ decides what the actual translation, translation text is. And import with options, there you would have a choice. For example, you could say in a word file, there are also comments. The client told me to translate the comments. So I can also add the comments as translatable text. Or in an Excel file, I can select an area, a range of cells that need to be translated. In InDesign, I can decide that also hidden layers can be translated. So the options let you control what the actual translation text is. Use the regular import then MemoQ will take everything that is visible and show that for translation. Now what we can see here is we have an import path 
and also an export path. The export path would be the one where MemoQ will save the file after translation if you don't specify anything else. So it would tell you, um, you would tell MemoQ to save it to the same folder, same folder structure, use the same file name as the source language file and add the identifier for the target language. So this is the default um, place where you would save the file. If you don't want to do that, you can always change that. There's no problem about that. The next step would bring you to the list of translation memories. So you can see that I have several translation memories. They go from English into German. One of them also goes from German into English. So you can use both um, ways of the translation memory, the languages that you've chosen for the project, but also the opposite language direction. You can also see that one of the, lang one of the translation memories is for you kingdom the other ones for are for English United States so you can use different language variations as well you can select the translation memories that you want to use so it could also be several translation memories that you want to use or if you don't want to use any of these right now you can create a new one the only thing you need to do is give it a name the languages are already selected and the default settings are OK. We can just click OK to that. It's now our working and master translation memory. Working translation memory means it's being updated while I translate. Every time I save a sentence, it goes to the working translation memory. I could split that up and say I have a master translation memory that's only updated at the end. And I have a working translation memory that's updated while I work. If I don't specify that, then this translation memory will be both. The next step then means same thing, but for the terminology databases. So here I can select which terminology database. If the one that I want to use is not in here, I can create a new one, give it a name, and the languages of my project have already been selected for my term base. It's like a dictionary that you can build up yourself. Then we finish the project setup and MemoQ jumps right into the project. Now let me just close the project quickly so that you can see here is my project in the dashboard in the list of projects. If I double click that, I jump into the project into the so-called project home area. The project home area lets you do all the settings in your project. So the translation area shows the documents for translation. The translation memory area shows the translation memories that you've chosen to work with but also all the other translation memories that are possible. Same goes for the term bases, the term base you've chosen, but also other term bases that you might want to add as well. To start translation, we double click on the file. Now we see the list of sentences of segments that are in the document for translation. Right beside that is the column where we type in our translation. Below that, we have a preview window. So for some of the file formats, there is a preview that goes for Office files. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, also HTML files, InDesign files, depending on how you import them into the project. But where you don't have a preview, that's, for example, FrameMaker files, or for XML files, you would see the text view. On the right-hand side, we have the so-called translation results list. And that's where we will get all our results from our databases. Let me get started with translation. As soon as I type something into the translation field, the gray area, the status area becomes um, orangey. The orange color means I'm now in editing mode. Now I would like to save this sentence pair. And that's what I do with the confirm button. There is a keyboard shortcut as well, control and enter. And that means the sentence pair is saved to the translation memory. MemoQ moves to the next sentence. The next sentence that is up for translation gets compared to all the sentences in the translation memory. And that's what we have here. We have here the sentence which is similar in the translation memory and the translation that has been saved for that. The 73% says the source sentence from the translation memory 
and the source sentence in my document are pretty similar. It's 73%. Now, don't ask me how they calculate that, because every tools vendor has a different way to calculate that. So other tools will give you a different number here. It's just to say that the sentences are pretty similar. Now, what's the similarity or what are the differences? You will see these three windows. We have a window that shows the sentence from the document, the similar sentence from the translation memory, and the translation from the translation memory. As these two sentences are pretty similar, the translation from the translation memory is put in as a suggestion for you to use in your translation. And now you can see the color blue means it's been automatically inserted from the translation memory. As soon as I change something here, it goes to orange again, which means I'm in editing mode. And then I can do the confirm again and it will turn green, which means it is a confirmed sentence and the sentence pair is saved to the translation memory. You can also see that I have these, this green bar here and here the bar with the arrow. If I move my mouse pointer over it, it says it's a repetition. So MemoQ will automatically, if you have a repeated sentence in your document and you translate the first instance of it, and confirm it, MemoQ will automatically put in the translation into all the repetitions in your document. Now let's go on with translation here. Just confirm the sentence. Now we can again see we have several similar sentences in the translation memory. We also have a so-called concordance match. So something that comes up in yellow and possibly without translation suggestion. This is because MemoQ is not only looking for whole sentences in the translation memory, but also always for short parts. So word combinations. If it finds a word combination that already has come up in other sentences, it will give you this yellow indication. If you double click on that yellow uh, color, you will get a window that shows all the sentence pairs from this translation memory or maybe other translation memories as well that shows the sentences that contain the words from the concordance search and also the, the sentences that are saved in the translation memory. From here, you can copy whole sentences by using the insert, or you could say, I only want to have this part and then the insert selected. Now I'll have to change the sentence a little bit and confirm again and go on to the next. So this is how you move uh, through MemoQ. Then there is uh, sentences that are pretty similar. Here you can see the sentences five and six are pretty similar. The main difference is one word and the number. Now, when I translate this sentence and then go on to the next, MemoQ will try to help me with the numbers. So I confirm this. And now I can see MemoQ has used the translation that was already saved to the translation memory and exchanged the number automatically. What it cannot do automatically, of course, is do a translation for me. That is something that we translators will have to do ourselves. Let me confirm this. Now here is a sentence number seven and number eight. You can see in the preview, they are split up by a line break. If I want to translate them together, I place my cursor in the first sentence and then just combine the two. There's a join button to combine the sentences. So here you can see now I have two segments, two sentences put into one. And then there is this small marker, which actually shows where the line break was. For my translation, I can use that line break either inside of the segment, if it needs to be there, or just put it at the very end of the segment. Let me just translate here. If I don't want to put it into the segment, I can put it at the end. I just should not forget it. If I don't use that marker, let me just delete this and now confirm my segment. I will see something that means there is an error. So this red exclamation mark means 
there is a mistake in my document and possibly I cannot get this document out of MemoQ again because now my source document has like nine line breaks, but my target document has uh, only eight line breaks. So the structure of the documents is different and this is something that MemoQ doesn't like. So what we do, we just copy the marker from source to target. You can do it manually, but there's also a button of course and a shortcut key that you can use to add this to your translation. Confirm the segment again, and now everything is okay. So this error message, that was something that came from the, um, from the QA check, from the quality check. And there are other things that you might see. For example, let me just change a number here. So now the numbers in the source sentence and in the target sentence are different. If I confirm this, I will get another message from the QA check from the quality check. That's this flash symbol. With a double click on the flash, you will see now it tells me what the issue is and um, it might be a problem that I have to solve. It might be that it's okay, then I can click on ignore because my translation is correct. Um, if there is a problem, I can then just correct the sentence and confirm it again. Now, sentence number eight, you can see there were two sentences in one segment because there is a space missing between the dot and the next sentence. So here I can go the other way around. I can split the sentences and translate them as two separate sentences in my MemoQ editor. You can also see that while I translate, the preview changes and the sentence that I am translating right now always has this red outline. Let's go to the last sentence. Again, this is something where I get the concordance search. So not a match for the whole sentence because I have not translated anything similar, but something for a part. And here's how you do the concordance search manually. If you want to search for something else, let's search for the word sentence. So you select it in the source language or in the target language, depends on where you want to search. Go to the concordance button and call up the window that now shows you all the segments in the translation memory that contain the word sentence in this case, so whatever you have selected. If you're searching in the target language, there is a search in the target button, and then you can do the search for the target language as well. Once you've translated everything, or actually at any point in the translation, you can get the document out of MemoQ again, so in the documents ribbon, you can say, I want to export. And now there's the export into stored path. So that is the path that MemoQ has um, selected to save the translated, uh, the translated document in the end. If you don't like it, you can use export with dialogue, which then lets you select where you want to save it and what name you want to give to the document. So you can do that at any time. What MemoQ will ask you, if you have not translated everything, it will tell you that for empty segments, it is going to save the source text. So the document you get now out of MemoQ will have a part already translated and the rest is still source text. So this is okay. You can do this export at any time during the translation process. Now, one more thing as we're working inside of the translation editor, I not only want to save whole sentences, but I also want to build up a dictionary. So I want to save also terminology. For that, I select the terms that I want to send to my terminology database. And then in the quick access bar, there is the quick add term, which will send the terms directly to the term base. There's also an add term where you can add some more information like a context example or other information if you need to. Let's do the quick add term. And you will see the results list now has changed. I not only see the red matches, which are the matches from the translation memory, the sentences, and the yellow ones, the concordance matches for parts of sentences, but the blue ones there, that's what comes from the terminology database. If I click on the term, it will show me what has been saved to the terminology database. I could still go in here, edit my entry and add something new. Maybe there's a second translation 
for sentence. And I want to save this as well with the blue plus, but my client told me that this is a translation which is possible, but it's forbidden. In this case, I should not use it. So I can go to the usage tab and make this term forbidden. Now you will see that the results list changes again. In blue, we have the terms that we should use. And in black, we have the terms that should not be used. And later on, if you really do use a forbidden term and run the quality check, it will also tell you that one of the forbidden terms comes up in your translation. So this is the actual translation part. Now let's think about um, if you want to start with MemoQ, what you have in the beginning is an empty database. So the translation memory is empty. You would have to save a lot of sentences into the translation memory before you can get matches for new documents that you translate. In order to fill up the translation memory or to get some material into the background, we have something called the alignment and that's in the live docs. So in your project, there's a live docs area where you can add um, a so-called corpus, which is a container for document pairs. So you have documents in the source language and also translated documents, and you want to match them up. And this is how we do it. We create a corpus. You can create it for a client or for a subject matter area. So it doesn't have to be a new corpus for every project. You can collect huge amount of data in one corpus. And then we would add the alignment pairs. So the documents in the source and in the target language. So we add the source documents. And here we can go and say, okay, I have an English document, a guide, and I also have another English document. I want to add both of them. And then I have some target documents. And here you can see that my target document now is a Word document. It's not a PDF, but MemoQ does allow that. So you can align two different file formats with each other. Sometimes MemoQ will recognize which files belong together. Sometimes it will not, then we will have to do that manually. So we select the two documents that we want to combine and then link the documents together. That's all we need to do. You can click OK. Now MemoQ goes into the documents, extracts the sentences, and tries to match, it, match up the sentences in the different documents. Let's take a look inside. You can do double click and open up the alignment. So first of all, I can see there are some tags that are there in the source, but not in the target. I don't need that. I can take them off. Here is a typo correct that. So you can see you can do a lot of things inside of the documents, inside of the alignment segments. Um, but please be aware that the alignment is not intelligent, so it will go by the structure of the file. It will align the first sentence in the source file with the first sentence in the target file. It doesn't matter if they really are the translation of each other, it will just go by the structure. So that's one thing. Let's take a look at the other document alignment. There's a little bit more text inside. And now we can go through and make sure that all the sentences are correctly matched up, but we don't have to. So that's why it's called live docs. It's something that you can use right away for translation. So let me show you. I'm going to add a new document to my project that is very similar to what I have in the alignment. And you can do that like this. You can take the file and drag it over into your list of translation documents. This is the same thing as doing a regular import. So now I have my document inside MemoQ. I can double click it to open it. And then click on one of the segments and see if I get any matches. And although I have not translated anything like that before, I don't have a translation memory that contains this text. I do get a match. I do get a suggestion of how it can be translated. And here it says it's an 85% match. 
Now, if we take a look at the sentence from the document and the sentence from this database or from this corpus, they are identical. So why do I only get an 85% match? Well, the thing is, it's a so-called auto link. So it's unfinished. It's, it's an auto link means it's only a green connection in the, in the alignment editor. So I have not confirmed the sentences in there. And it's unfinished. There's a small checkbox to say that a alignment is finished. Now let's change that. You can do a right mouse click on the match that you get and say, show me the document. So jump to the alignment. Now in here, I can go and confirm segments. So I select the segment in the source and in the target so that they have this blue background. And then I do a so-called synchro link. That's when they are both on the same level. The other thing I could do is I could do a cross link, which means I connect sentences across other text. Let me just do that so that you can see how it looks like. So that's what a cross link would look like. But now we're actually talking about this one. So that's now a confirmed sentence. Let's go back to the document. Now my results list comes up with a 90% match, which means by confirming the sentence pair, I don't have such a big subtraction from my match rate anymore. It's only 10% less than it would usually be. And now let's go back to our alignment again. Just imagine everything is okay. I've checked everything. I have this checkbox to finish the alignment and move back to my document for translation. And now I get 101% match. And yes, I know there's nothing like 101%, but we needed something that looks better than 100% match. Now, what's the difference? 100% match means the source sentence that I have in my document exists in my in this case, in the alignment or in the translation memory. 101% match means that it's not only this sentence, but also the sentence before and the sentence after are the same in the document here and also in the translation memory or in the alignment. So if that context is also the same, then it's better than just 100% match, it's 101% match. To take this into my translation, I can use a double click or I can use the control key and the number that it shows in between the sentences. And this is how easily you can get already translated material into a MemoQ editor by just putting it into the live docs, into the alignments, and uh, you don't have to send them to a translation memory first. It's possible, you can do that. So if we go back to the alignment, we say I want to confirm everything, and then I want to export to my translation memory. The translation memory that is attached to the project can now be filled up with all the confirmed sentences from the alignment. So if you want to do that, you can, but you don't have to really. So that's the translation part, the alignment part. The last part I would like to talk about is also the terminology. You've seen that I can send terminology to the term base by just selecting the terms. It doesn't have to be just one term. It could be a whole expression. And then send it to the term base. But maybe you already have a list of terminology and you want to import that into your terminology database. Of course, we can do that as well. Let me show you how that could look like. I have a small Excel file and the Excel file has several um, columns. There's a subject matter indication, there's some kind of note. I have German in it and actually I have three columns with German because one of the words has synonyms so there are other terms that I can use um, to express this word but one of them is forbidden I can make it red in my Excel file, so it will import as a forbidden term. And then I have my English expressions. So now I need to import that into my term base. I will see the headings of my columns and then I just assign them to the different fields in my terminology database. So let's go to project home. 
to the term basis. I can edit my term base and do the import there, or I could do the import right away into the selected term base. Select my term list and show the first row, which contains the names of the columns. Let's go from the bottom. One column was for the English term, so I'm imported as a term. Now I have to make sure that it's exactly the type of English that I selected because there are many other English um, variants. So you have to be sure that you put it into the right English. The ones that you use for the project are at the top of the list. So you can always go to the top of the list and you will get the right languages. Now let's go for German. That is German Germany and I have three columns of that. So I'm going to put all of these to the language of German. And I have this note. Either I could say I do not import that because I don't need it. Or I could say, well, this is one of the other fields and there's actually a note field that I can use in MemoQ. And I have the subject matter column. And there's also a subject field in MemoQ. That's it. You can see the example of how my Excel file looks like. And I'm going to import that. And then we'll take a look inside by editing the term base. And here you can see I have all the terms that have been entered. I see that I have these three different German terms and one of them is forbidden. If I select this in the list, I can also see that I have these three different terms for my German term caret. And also one of them, the one that was marked in red in my Excel file comes up as forbidden. And actually, here's a small field for example. Now, don't be deceived. The field looks small, but I promise you, you can copy up to 10 pages of Word inside. So it's really big inside. You can add a lot of information to your terms. You could also add an image. I think I have a nice image for a strawberry. So I want to add an image, import the file, and now it will show up in the term base and also if I have the word strawberry in my text and the results list shows that the term is there in the term base, I can then also call up the picture to see what this term is all about. So all of these database, you can now close them again and then we can close the project and go back to the list of projects and go into another project to do something else. So this is the actual process to get started with MemoQ. Now let's see what we have in the question lists, if there's anything that we need to talk about. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat or into the question list. Let me just first check the chat. Okay, there's a question. Um, is there any way to just open files to translate directly upon receiving it from a client or do we need to create a project every time? Um, yes, a project is necessary to be able to translate. But what you can do is what I have a lot of um, clients of mine do. They have one project, like my training project here. They open it. And they just drag and drop the files in this area. So they actually translate always in the same project. They always have the same settings, the same translation memory, the same term base. They just add new files to this existing project. If you're working with different language directions, you would need different projects. Sometimes you also want to have a project per client. So this is something that you can do. And if you get some files for translation, let me just quickly show that. Usually a right mouse click would also have this translate in MemoQ, which would then open MemoQ and use the template process to create a new project for you with automatically a new translation memory and a new term base attached. This is something that you can do, but you're right. Every time you translate something, you need a project. So let me go on to the next one. 
Okay, here's a question if the software is for free. Um, yes and no. <laughs> there is a demo version that runs for 45 days in full mode, so you can try it out. After that, it, re it reverts to MemoQ for free, which then allows you to have one project that contains one file for translation and one translation memory. The downside is that you cannot reuse the translation memory for other projects. So every project has one file, one translation memory, and it's totally a, a new project, a new translation. You cannot reuse anything that you do in one project for another. That would be the MemoQ for free. If you have a client who uses the MemoQ server, then they can lend you a license for as long as you work with their server projects. But otherwise, you would need to have your own license to take full advantage of of the software. Now here's a question of which version this one is. That's the latest version. So that's the MemoQ 8.7.6. That's the latest one that's on the market at the moment. Okay, next one. Could you please explain the extra added value of using live docs again on top of translation memories and or term bases? Well, the live docs, actually, they have several uses. First of all, you can reuse everything that you have done so far where you have not used the translation memory tool, so you don't have a translation memory. Then you can reuse all your old files that you already translated. The second part of the live docs is that you can also add um, additional material, reference material, style guides from clients. You can add pictures. You can add um, videos, sound files. You can add documents that only have one language, but you can use them for concordant searching. And another one is, and that is something I would use as well, once you've translated a document and it's finished, I would do a right mouse click and say, I want to add this to the live docs. Because the difference is, in a translation memory, you only save sentence pairs. So they're basically disconnected from the actual document that you're translating. When you send your translated file to the live docs, you have the document pair side by side, the whole context that you can always look up. So if you get a match from your live docs, a suggestion for a translation, you can go back to the live docs and see the whole document and see the whole document pair. So the live docs have many functionalities, but mainly it's to hold all the material that you already have that you didn't translate with a translation memory system. So what else do we have? If you're working on an English-German translation with only this way, language pair in your TM, and you do not have a German to English TM attached, you do not get these hits if you later translate on a German to English file. Well, the thing is, if you have a project, in my case, it's English to German. I have an English to German translation memory attached. Later on, when I do a translation German to English, I can attach the same translation memory and I'll get the matches. It's all about adding the translation memories with the checkboxes here, and then you get matches from all these translation memories. It doesn't matter if they're English to German or German to English. The only difference is the one that you can use for writing into needs to have the same language direction as your project. So my project is English to German. I need to have an English to German translation memory that is set as working translation memory so that I can save into. If I want to use a different one, I can do can select it, do a right mouse click and say, set this one as the working translation memory, and now I'll be saving into that one. But for matches, you can use all of them. Doesn't matter what the language direction is. So then we have a question, is there a way that the term base is filled automatically so that we don't have to add every term separately? Unfortunately, no, because again, I have to say the system is not intelligent. It would not know what a term is and which terms you want to save. So for the translation memory, yes, it's being added sentence by sentence as you go through the document. For the term base, you will have to select the terms that you want to save there. So now the question, is it possible to do reviews in MemoQ? So to correct the translations of another translator with visible marks, yes, it is. So for example, I'm not a translator right now, I'm a reviewer. I can change my settings 
and say, I'm not confirming sentences as a translator, but I'm doing that as a reviewer number one, for example. Now, if I go inside a document and change something maybe, and I confirm this sentence, you will see that now the mark is different. Now I have a small check mark with a plus, and the other ones are just check marks. So the simple check mark is translator confirmed, check mark with a plus is reviewer one, and if I have two check marks, that's reviewer number two. So I can have different marks, and then there is also a filtering option where you can say, show me everything that has been only translator confirmed or only reviewer one confirmed. So it's possible to filter out these segments as well. So are the live doc corpora already loaded in my MemoQ interface? Well, the area for the live docs is there. So in the project home, there is a live docs area, but the corpus has to be created by you. So you create a new corpus. And in the corpus, you then add your alignment documents. So documents in source and target language. So this is something that you will have to do yourself with the material that you have. Okay, question. Can I ask my students to insert remarks? Why they have chosen a certain kind of translation, a kind of, hmm, well, there is something like a comment, which is safe with the file. So if I go into the file itself, there's a small comment bubble. So here I could say, I double click the comment bubble. I can say, um, and say I've chosen the word schön here because it sounds nicer than the word nice to me. So yes, you can add a comment to a sentence. Now the comment bubble will turn yellow, but these comments are only inside of MemoQ. So this is nothing that you can export into the final file. It's just inside MemoQ. Okay, then another question. I know there are shared translation memories. How can I access them? Well, for sharing translation memories, you would need to work with a MemoQ server. So either it's a client of yours who has a MemoQ server who allows you access to a translation memory that several people can work, use at the same time, or you set up a con, um, an account on the language terminal, which is a free platform by MemoQ, where you can then can share a translation memory with, I think, up to three users. But this is um, a different topic, so I would have to add uh, more information on that by email. Okay, another question. What are muses? Good question. There are also muses. A muse is something that helps you type. So while you're typing, MemoQ might make suggestions on what you probably want to type. This is something that comes from the translation memories. So the translation memories can be used to create a so-called muse. It's a list of expressions that come up frequently in the sentences that you've translated. So for example, if I'm translating a contract and I always have to translate something that goes into English in, um, and says, in this respect. So now, as soon as I start typing in this, I will get a pop-down menu that lists all the things that start with in this. And then I can select the one I want to use. So the muses are there to help you translate faster because it will suggest uh, fragments to you that you can reuse. Uh, is there a training for project managers using a server? Well, this is something I would have to talk to the people at MemoQ about if we are going to do something like that. I'm sorry, I cannot answer this at the moment, but we'll put that into the email. Another question, I would like to upgrade to the latest version. I have an old one from MMQ 2014. Um, how to upgrade? Again, I would need to pass this on to the people at MemoQ and we will get back in the email with information on how this could be done. Now here's a question, the software accepts any extensions. Extensions, I guess you mean plugins. So this is something that you would find in the options. Let's see, there are 
plugins for online translation memory systems, so other translation memory systems that are not MemoQ. There is a terminology plugin, so you can use the Euro Term Bank or the uh, terminology as a service plugin. There are also, let me just move out to the settings here, there are machine translation plugins where you can add, if you have um, a login for a machine translation system, you can add it or you can um, put it in here and then machine translation would also be attached to MemoQ. So this, I guess, was meant by extensions. If that's not what you meant, please put it into the chat again. Now the question, do I really need the manager version of MemoQ to assign parts of the project to a team? Check on work and correct it. Um, that could be done through the translator version. Well, the translator version will allow you to, it will not allow you to assign work. You can pass on the project to somebody else, but the translator version only allows you a project that has one target language. The project manager version would allow you to have several target languages. The project manager version would also allow you to create packages and then assign them to translators. And the server version would allow you to track the, the progress in, in real time. So with the MemoQ translator version, yes, there's a little bit of project management that you can do. In the list of projects, you can create a backup file that contains the whole project, give that to somebody else. And when they send it back to you after they're done, you can restore it and it will update the project in your list. But that's about the project management that you can do. Um, otherwise, you would have to pass on single files. So if I do an export of a bilingual file, I can use XLIF files for people who are using other tools. I can use um, a Word document with a table inside for people who don't use a tool. So there is a little bit of project management that you can do, but it's not full-fledged project management as you would see with assigning files, that's not possible. Okay, this tutorial be available on the web. Yes, we have recorded the session. It will be put on YouTube and on the MemoQ website in a few days. Yes, exactly. So I think we now reached the end of the webinar. Oh yeah, so... you're right. Time is up. So I'll have to copy the questions from the chat and send you something by email so that you all have the information about that. Yes, perfect. So. Thank you again for attending this session. And so you, you will receive uh, the answers to your questions soon by email and the recording will be available on YouTube and at memoq.com. And also thank you, Angelica, for the presentation. Thank you, you're welcome. And thank you everybody for being here and bearing with me for this half hour of memoq.